Right, in this, in this video, what we're going to do is extend uh, the kind of question uh, using KTTR to uh, get questions from people, but we're going to do it more in a little bit more managed way where we're going to have a question repository, and based upon that, we'll actually load them onto the form. So what I have here is a little smart object for uh, the questions. So quite nice, uh, just uh, a category, so we could segregate them, so it's not all just the same question. Maybe we want to ask different questions based upon a certain condition and what the question is going to be. All right, so we've got that, and all I've done just very simply is just built an example where we can go and specify uh, the kind of questions. So you can see here for category A, let's just sort that, uh, we've got a bunch of questions, and then for category B, uh, we've got a bunch of questions. So essentially, I could come inside here and say I want to add a new question to uh, maybe category A, and I'm going to check that this is a new cat A question, something like that, or whatever we want to do inside there, you know, and we can go in here and save it, and this is now the place where I can go and manage the different questions. I'll even go and add another one over here, where I'm going to go to Word, we take a, let's do it equals uh, rand, maybe a, for the question that's three paragraphs, and this is a, a pretty big one, I'm going to take that, and I'm going to go and put that inside there as well, and save that. All right, so we've got those different questions. Let's start this one, because I've got one that says video here. This is a uh, new Q dash, something like that. All right, so let's save that. All right. Okay, so that's just a little place to manage your questions. And again, the data that sits behind that smart view, that could come from a SharePoint list or a SQL database or whatever you want. In my case, I just built that all from K2, and it, 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 it's got that in, in there for me. But the next thing I do is I've got a, an answers a smart object now, right? So, well, first a header. Let's go and have a look at the header. So in my header, uh, just really basic, I've got who is going to answer this question, uh, the, the set of questions, uh, what data is it, and what category of question are they answering? Question uh, category A or category B? So I know which questions to bring up. So that's the first thing I've got. That's the header. So for each set of answered questions, there's going to be one header, and then Inside here, we've got the actual answers, and the answers is going to have the question, the answer, and then which header does it belong to. So that links this one with that one over there. So you're going to have one header with many answers. All right. So what we then have is uh, an editable list, which uh, allows you to list all the questions and then have somebody edit, you know, and add the answers to it. And I have a little header item over here, which is the details of that. So if you go and have a look at that, now for the header, you just have you know who it is that's logged in, and I'll add a little little thing over here that when this view initializes to to perhaps uh, auto populate uh, the person that's that's about to fill this in. So let's go inside here. Let's get the uh, current display name. Let's put that as the user, and I'll even get the current date and time to pre-populate. The, uh, the date and time that this question is going to be answered. Okay, so that's going to be the user. They're going to choose a category and the date. Now the category is just hard coded um, where I've got just the two categories, category A and category B. So if they choose category A or category B, we want to load those questions. So a little, uh, little trick I've done inside here is that when you choose a category, this little drop down this box actually gets populated with all the questions against that correlating smart object. So it actually brings the data uh, into, into this view. So we know when they choose a category, what are the list of questions, and we're going to use that later. All right, so let's go and have a look at the questions editable list. So here's the list. This is going to get populated. So we're going to have the question, and then they can type in the answer. And for here, I've just used a little text box so they can type it in. We could do much more advanced stuff. Maybe when they click on it, we can pop up a bigger window and 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 uh, ask the question and, and give them a nice bit of space to type it in, or even check what type of question it is and, and show maybe a date picker or a, or a numbers box or a text box or whatever it might be. And that's something more advanced we can do later. But for now, just quite simple question and answer. All right. To put it all together, I've got a form called question answers. So you'll see it's got the header section in it, and it's got the list of questions. Now, what happens is that when you choose a category, we populate this little drop-down, which will be invisible, with a list of questions. And I have a little rule that sits on this form. So remember, when this loads, these questions are going to be empty, because we need to go and fetch out of the question repository 
all the questions for the category that they've selected. So they choose category A, we want to populous, populate this with all the questions for category A, or obviously category B, and the same thing. So in order to do that, I'm tapping in that when this drop-down has changed, so when the person selects a specific, a specific category, what I'm doing here is that first I clear the list of questions, so that if you're choosing category A and then you choose category B and you choose category A, I don't want to just keep adding to the list. I want to clear the list and then just bring in the questions for that specific category. Then I'm doing a, a little for each year. What I'm doing is I'm saying go to each of the questions that I've come back in the drop down. So those are all the questions for category A or all the questions for category B. Go to the questions answer section and add a new row. Then I'm doing a transfer and this transfer is quite interesting. What I'm doing is to the new row that we're going to add to the questions, I need to populate the question which comes now from the headers. And it comes from that drop down that I populate. Should have probably given it a bit of name. But this now brings back that rep question repository of all the questions. Right? So I'm populating the question and putting it inside here. Then I apply that. So in other words, add a new row to, to, the, to the editable list, add the question based upon the category in there, and apply it so that it is in there. Then it'll go back and say, is there any more questions I need to add? Yes, there is. Add a new row, add the question, apply. And then it'll go through all the questions and populate that question uh, list inside there. All right, so let's have a look at that running now. So let's go and open up uh, this question answers. Uh, so it's actually populated some defaults in here. Let's go and just make one small uh, change to that. So when this editable list loads, it's got a default rule in here that as soon as it loads up, it's going to go and get all the questions that have been answered. Well, I don't want all the questions that have been answered previously, so I'm just going to disable that, or I could, in fact, delete it. I'm just going to disable it for now. All right, so let's try that again. So when I refresh that, so this is a new one that comes up. There's no questions yet because I need to choose a category. So now when I go and choose category A, you can see there's all the questions that have now come in, including that really big one that we typed in a little bit earlier. And now I can go inside here and go and you know put in and start answering all the questions uh, that we had that we've got the answer. Now, of course, we can tidy this up a little bit further. But that's just showing you a way of, you know, I've been hard-coded these questions on this form. If we ever need to add more questions, I simply go to my question repository, add the additional question, you know, specify how it should be laid out, and it'll be populated over here. I choose category B. You can see there's a questions for category B. Category A, there's a questions for category A. So let's go and just show you a small example of, of answering some of those. So I've chosen category A for this example over here. Uh, I'm going to go and add some answers. So I'll say this person's 12 years old, and uh, there's an answer for this one, an answer for that one, and then uh, another answer for this, whatever the details might be that we need to tap in here. And there's all sorts of validation we can do on this as well. I'm going to go and save that now. All right. And what I've also done is I've added a little report here, which is my answered questions report. Let's go and run that one. And what this does is it brings back all the questions that have been answered. This is the one that we just answered a few seconds ago. And if I click on that, there's all the answers. So I can see all the previous people that have answered questions. There's, there are the questions and the answers. This is the one we just did now. There's the questions and the answers.